The Centers for Disease Control is urging Americans to skip St. Patrick's Day celebrations and just stay home. It is encouraging people to mask up and enjoy the holiday by gathering virtually with household members or at outdoor gatherings where people can practice social distancing. The warning comes after spring breakers broke pandemic air travel records over the weekend. Health experts are voicing concerns about the pace of reopening in some states with a number of more contagious variants spreading rapidly across the U.S. The CDC is calling two strains first detected in California the variants of concern. Meanwhile, the Department of Health and Human Services says it will distribute $10 billion to help states implement coronavirus testing in K-12 schools. The money is part of the Biden administration's $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan. The president has set a goal of reopening most schools within his first 100 days. Dr. Glenn Morris joins me now. He is a professor of medicine and director of the Emerging Pathogens Institute at the University of Florida. Doctor, welcome. Thanks very much for being with us. While cases are still decreasing nationally, some states that lifted coronavirus restrictions are already seeing either an uptick in new infections or a slowdown in declining cases, specifically Minnesota, Maryland, New Jersey, and the Metro New York City area. From a public health perspective, doctor, does it make sense to move forward with reopening businesses? I think I think there's probably a need to slow things down. Um, again, what we're seeing here is that um, people sort of feel like it's all over. I'm fine. I can get out. I can do anything I want to. Um, but when that happens, um, they get out. There's the potential for exposure. We've had a number of people who have received vaccine. We've had uh, a number of people infected, but we still are not uh, anywhere near the herd immunity level where we can expect to see significant drops in transmission rates. We're getting there, but it's still important right now to continue to be careful and to follow the CDC recommendations. Well, TSA reported the most travelers since the pandemic began over the past weekend. We are now at some 2 million vaccine doses being administered every day. Should those who have been fully vaccinated feel safer to travel? I think they can feel safer, but I think it's important to continue to maintain the, um, the mitigation strategies, the recommendations that CDC has put out. Masking remains important. Um, and again, one of the things we're concerned about are these variant strains. Um, they, you know, have the potential for causing disease um, in individuals who may have had prior exposure either to the virus or to, uh, to the vaccine. And so consequently, until we get things under, you know, a little tighter control and numbers really start dropping, um, Continuing to wear a mask and continuing to follow the CDC recommendations makes sense. And doctor, what is your sense on how the country's vaccination efforts measure up against the variant strains? Well, I think the vaccination efforts per se are going quite well. Again, as you pointed out, we're pushing 2 million vaccines administered per day. I think the key at this point is going to be to begin to to shift over and start looking for populations which have had some hesitancy about getting vaccinated. Um, we're not quite there yet, but um, we need to really start looking at some of the minority populations, some other high-risk populations who have elected not to get vaccine right at this moment. Um, and I think again, over the next couple of weeks, months or so, we will begin to shift over uh, away from sort of the mass vaccination uh, type strategies we have and focusing more on particular groups and hard to reach groups. In terms of the variants, um, the key here is that we, we wanna try to keep the numbers of cases as low as possible. Um, and um, what happens is that when you've got a lot of virus circulating out there, then the viruses are gonna evolve. And uh, as the viruses evolve, um, one creates variants. And some of these variants may have the appropriate genes to be able to uh, 
cause illness in people who have been vaccinated. So consequently, um, the critical thing at this point in time is to try to keep things under control, minimize transmission, wear a mask, follow CDC recommendations, and absolutely get vaccinated when you have the opportunity to do so. Well, public health experts have said that getting any of the current vaccine should offer some protection against serious illness and death from coronavirus variants. But we know that pharmaceutical companies are trying to take a more proactive approach. What are some other options that are in development that may be available in the near future? I think, again, I think the key is probably to move forward with um, what have been called booster doses. Um, and again, this gets back to the idea that viruses evolve all the time. Uh, and in fact, with influenza, we're very familiar with this because each year we have to come out with a new flu vaccine, which is targeted toward these specific vaccine strains, which are circulating at that point in time. We're seeing a similar type of effect here where um, we have one strain that, or you know, fairly closely related group of strains that were, were causing the initial outbreaks um, as time passes, as more and more people become infected, um, we see evolution within these strains. And just like was with flu, one has to switch the vaccine a little bit. Um, the same thing is going to be happening with coronavirus. We will need to make some modifications in the vaccine. And again, this probably is easy, most easily done, at least in the short term, by, uh, by using some type of booster dose for those individuals who've already been vaccinated. All right, Dr. Glenn Morris. Doctor, thank you very much. You're quite welcome.